What's going on, Dolphins fans? Welcome back to the Fins Up Network. It's Ben Morgan, and in today's video, we're breaking down the Dolphins' 26 to 24 preseason Week One victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But much like you, I I, I don't really care about the score of a preseason game. Preseason games for me, and I hope for most of you out there, player evaluation. That's what I want to discuss. In the regular season, when I do game recaps, it'll be more outcome-based. It'll be also player performances. But preseason, I literally take my notes during the game, and I just want to regurgitate those notes to you. So I'm going to try to kind of scoot through them pretty fast because I take quite a few notes during the game, and I don't want to bog down the video with a very long recap since it is preseason. But like I said, let's just go position by position with some of the notes that I had. So let's start with the quarterbacks because we only saw one of them and that was Skylar Thompson. And honestly, a nice performance. Showed good command, showed good confidence. He even tucked and ran for a, a few good carries there when things were breaking down after he made it through his progressions. Was the team's second leading rusher, I believe as well. But had some good success, showed more than I thought he was actually going to show for a rookie seventh round draft pick being thrown into live action right away. And I know it's against a vanilla defense and it's against the team that also held a ton of players out. Got to tip the hat a little bit to Skylar Thompson in his debut. Well, let's book over to the running backs because honestly, Miles Gaskin was really the only one worth noting. He had good burst hitting that hole on the left side early in the third quarter, but outside of that 20 yard run. And if you take away Skylar Thompson's 25 rush yards, the team ran for four yards the remainder of the game so and I know that wasn't just running backs either like Zaquandrick White's run he had nowhere to go the line needs to block better we'll see a little bit better when guys like Armstead when Connor Williams are actually playing in games the line needs to block better but hopefully we have more running back notes to report on after the next game but jumping into the wide receivers I thought Cedric Wilson looked smooth that's the word that I've always kind of described him with he looked just like he did when he was at Dallas, simply just able to be relied, relied on when his number is called. I saw plenty of him in his limited action. But let's get on to the touchdown score because Lynn Bowden, he scored his touchdown right after Elijah Campbell's crazy interception, which we'll get to. I don't know if you saw it. He had a nasty move to get open on the, the game broadcast. You just saw him back there like he was fielding a punt. But he actually ran like, like he was going to run a – going to run a go kind of did a stutter where he turned back like he was going to run a comeback and as soon as that that defender ended up kind of making a charge Bowden kicked it into high gear got into the end zone made it easy for Skylar Thompson also have noted uh he opened the third with a chunk yardage catch on a nice play action pass that was a beauty um some decent returns in the return game not sure what that fair catch at the five yard line was about all around solid game from Lynn Bowden, whether he ends up making this, this roster or if we're bumping up his trade value to trade to a different team. One of the better players from the night, though, was Lynn Bowden Jr. Got to give props when it is due. Trent Sherfield had a nice 33-yard catch on what I believe was his only target of the game. Mohamed Sanu looking like the, the, veter, the veteran, the savvy vet. Um, hauling in all three of his targets for 39 yards. The position is deep. I mean, we didn't see much from Braylon Sanders. Uh, we had like one nice play by Eric Ezukama where he showed a little bit of that um, ability to create after the catch. I really liked that play. But what we saw was that this position group is just simply deep. Obviously, no Tyreek, no, 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 uh, geez, Jalen Waddle. <laughs> I got to get it together there. Um, obviously, without quarterback to a tongue of Iloa playing. However, what we saw was this position group is relatively deep, which in my opinion probably means what we're all thinking. Bye-bye, Preston Williams. I think he, I don't think he had a target. I think he returned a punt. But what we saw in this scheme and everything, it's getting the balls, two wide receivers and letting them create after the catch. And Preston just doesn't get the separation. He's not, he's not built for this type of offense. So I've already spent too much time on the wide receivers, but that's probably my takeaway from that one. Tight end position. Mike Gesicki, I found it uh, interesting and funny all at the same time that he was uh, he was targeted with the first play pass of the game. And it was an example of getting easy yards based on the scheme. Because if you remember, Skylar Thompson did like a fake toss, rolled the other way, and it was Gesicki for like 10 yards. Back in the day, I've talked about this before, the Dolphins have had such a hard time 
getting even just yards like that. But in this offense, we're seeing it already that they, they scheme it different. It just feels different. And that play to Gasicki was case in point. So got him involved early, got him out, which was good to see. Tanner Connor, fun player. I think you guys would all agree with that. Three more receptions Saturday night, continuing that strong case for if he doesn't make this final roster, which I still think he has a shot for, but if he doesn't, practice squad at the very least. Let's get into the big nasties, the offensive line. I had Larnell Coleman. My note says he was bullied on the third and goal play on the uh, the first drive. And she's just showing how much that health of a guy like Teron Armstead is going to be key to success this season. Not breaking any news by saying that. But that play reminded me of what we saw from the joint practices where I think it was Thursday when they when they had a bunch of nice plays in a row, got down to it, took two sacks basically to end the period. Didn't even get a chance to score the touchdown. Giving up that sack is kind of what reminded me of that. So hopefully that's a trend that's not going to continue to show its face, but rather we can go ahead and just get rid of it throughout training camp, throughout preseason. Uh, on a positive note, though, didn't see any snap issues. Uh, like I said, I'd like to see Connor Williams and actually have him get a series or two to see how it goes with him with in-game action, but no fundamental snap issues Saturday night. So that's probably your biggest takeaway of the day right there. On the defensive side of the ball, Brandon Jones just continuing to fill run gaps. He had a great example of that in the first quarter. I think I think he hit the running back two yards after he crossed the line of scrimmage and just took him right to the ground. Another good outing right there from Brandon Jones. No egg monogamy. I don't know, honestly, if that first quarter touchdown was on him or not. It seemed to either just be a bad defensive play call in general or just the execution wasn't there from not only Noah, but probably the safety on the play as well. But outside of that, we didn't really we didn't really hear his name called all that much. We didn't see his number trailing a defender running 50 yards down the field, which is good. So there was a bit of a blemish there on that touchdown. Nothing super huge worth noting outside of that. But on a positive play, Keon Crossan had him with a great play on the deep ball from Kyle Trask to Scotty Miller in the second quarter. It got his hand there for the PBU. And obviously plays like that are going to be super important with what we ended up seeing from Trill Williams because Trill Williams filled in beautifully early third quarter on a run stop, showed us that he's more than just a coverage guy. What he's been showing is in camp has been coverage, pass breakups, interceptions. It's been great, but he started showing it in the run game on Saturday. And then he had the uh, the great break on the wide receiver where he ended up making the tackle and getting injured, which super unfortunate if that's anything serious. I don't have any updates as of right now recording this on Sunday, so I'll have to kind of wait and see how that goes. We all got to hope and pray for the best in that situation. But what he showed Saturday is just a nice addition to what we've been hearing about all training camps. So hopefully everything is good to go with Trill Williams. I talked about Elijah Campbell, uh, Campbell, the foot interception. First, I, I got to give him the most credit on this play to the line, the pressure that the defensive line was able to produce. <clears throat> Porter Augustin, I believe in particular, and second, the interception, more so lucky than anything. But, hey, an interception is an interception in the stat sheet at the end of the day. And, hey, he had to be in position on that defender to make the play. So give Elijah, credit, or Elijah Campbell credit as well. Going on to the linebackers in the defensive line, Channing Tindall made his first notable play in the third quarter when he was lined up outside on Rashad White, the rookie running back out of Arizona State. Wrapped him up basically to right after the catch. Nice play. Also had another um, tackle short of the sticks on a third down as the fourth quarter started. So in general, we saw him kind of play in that spiral. We saw him up front in that zero blitz scheme. We saw him drop back into coverage. No notable plays that really went against him. I, for one, was impressed with what I saw from Channing Tindall in his first game action as well. Sam Egwavon had a little bit of an up and down night from what I was able to see. He had a missed tackle on a big play early in the second quarter. And if he's going to end up being the guy that's patrolling the middle of a field, which on that play he was, that's the tackle you got to make. Rather than the team getting off the field with that tackle, the Buccaneers ended up getting six on that possession. And that one missed tackle kind of led to being the difference. However, we talked about the, the ups and the downs, and that was the down. Well, here's the up redeemed himself with the scoop and score. 
Mr. Preseason himself, Sam Eglavon, with a fumble recovery and a touchdown. But I do want to give a tip of the cat to Darius Hodge on that play because what a great rep. Getting that leverage with the, the left hand, I believe it was his inside hand, pushing his defender back and then just pu pushing his the, the tackle back and then being able to swoop inside, get the trask, get the sack, knock the ball out. So all in all, Darius Hodge really gets the highlight of that play. And one more player that I want to point out on defense was Cameron Good, seventh rounder out of Cal. Like what I saw, I believe he had six tackles. He had a pass defended at the line of scrimmage, showed that ability. This is my favorite thing, that ability to track the ball carrier from behind. When, he, when, the, when the run, I think, was going left, he was up on the right, and he just went on block, but he scooted all the way right down the line of scrimmage, made that tackle from behind, got the ball carrier at the line of scrimmage. We saw him doing it at Cal. And we saw him already do it in preseason week one action. So really liked what I saw out of Cameron Good. And last but certainly not least, Jason Sanders. Is 2020 Jason Sanders back? Four for four, including two from 50 plus. What a sigh of relief it would be if we got 2020 Jason Sanders back, where basically if you know a field goal is coming, you might as well just put three points up on the board because the dude was automatic. But that's what we saw already in week one of preseason action from him. But that's what I said. That's what I had for my notes for today. Try to keep it quick, just going position by position and get as many players included as possible that I had the notes on. Like I said, it'll be a little bit different in the regular season. But also want to recap the preseason game since these are a lot of guys that are going to be filling in the roster. But that's what I've got for today, Dolphins fans. Let's hear your thoughts on the game in the comments below. And until next time, fins up.